Hey, last time I was talking to you guys, I discussed, amongst other things, the family against sinners. I discussed my unending, undying love for that forbidden word. Logic. And I discussed Andy Phoenix. And I have to say, genuinely, I was very surprised and very pleased by the response that I got to the last promo. A little bit overwhelmed too by some of the reviews. I know Time Magazine called it the, the breakout promo of 2011. The Caster St. Edmunds Gazette called me a verbal virtuoso. Gia. And the Bally de Hop Tribune called me a veritable factory of charisma. Hmm. Which I assume is a good thing. Not entirely sure. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take it as a compliment anyway, and we can just move on from there. Anyway, let's get down to business. Last time, as I say, I mentioned Andy Phoenix. Why did I mention Andy Phoenix? Well, at Anarchy in Artain, uh, last month, I had a match with Vic Viper. And once that match had concluded, Andy Phoenix comes out and hits me in the head with a briefcase. Why? Your guess is as good as mine. I have absolutely no clue. I don't know, and to be honest, I'm not really inclined to care. I, I, I don't know his motives, I don't know his reasons, and I don't care. Fact is, he did it. Let's just move on. And the last time, I made a cardinal mistake. I made an error, which surprised me. I don't like to make many errors, but I made a pretty big one the last time because I, I laid out the challenge to Andy and I assumed that he'd respond. But he didn't. And as we all know, to assume is to make an ass out of you and me. And I very much made an ass out of me. Which, it isn't fun, you know? Anyway, with one week to go, I'm not wearing a wristwatch, but you get the idea. With one week to go to Blanchestown, I haven't heard from Andy. So I don't know if he's going to be there, if he's accepted my challenge. So I decided I was going to take the bull by the horns and I was going to make contact. So I picked up the phone, dialed his number, rang and rang and it rang out. Couldn't get a hold of him. Fair enough. Not everyone has a landline. Not everyone picks up their phone. So I texted him. And he never got back. And I emailed him. And he never got back. And I Facebooked him. And as is to be a theme here, he never got back. And then I decided to tweet him. Because I've just recently discovered the global phenomenon known as Twitter. And now I'm only a few years behind, but bear with me. I'm a modern Luddite. Anyway, I tweeted him. At Andy Phoenix. Hi Andy, Blanche Match, question mark, LBBSA. That's uh, laughing boisterously, but seriously asking. XO, XO, your pal. Bingo. Well, do you think he tweeted back? No, of course not. He didn't retweet, he didn't tweet me back. There was no tweeting of any kind involved. He just ignored the message. So I thought to myself, hmm, perhaps this is a gentleman who does not go in for all the modern types of communication. Doesn't, doesn't like telephones, doesn't like texting, emailing, Facebook or Twitter. Nothing wrong with that. Perhaps this is a gentleman of some old school tastes. So I went out to Eason's and I got myself wireless telegraphy for dummies. And I read that bad boy cover to cover. Everything about wireless telegraphy, I know now. So I went out, I dusted off the old telegraph and I sent Andy a telegram. But alas, not a word back. I was at my wit's end, I'm not afraid to admit it. And in times of desperation, you, well, you've just got to do everything you can. 
So I went and called in my best carrier pigeon, Speckled Jim. I called Jim in, I took the little piece of paper, wrote the note on it, rolled it up, tied it to Jim's claw and sent him to the Phoenix compound. And off he went. And three days later, my avian amigo returned with nothing, empty handed or empty clawed to be slightly more accurate. It's a bird we're talking about. Anyway, so Andy, I cannot reach you for love nor money. So obviously I'm again coming on the internet with a promo trying to get a hold of you if you happen to watch this. I was thinking to myself, this guy is ducking me. Why? And then I sort of considered that maybe, maybe, you regret what you did. It's possible. We all have regrets. It's a natural part of life. I know <laughs> many is the time I've gone out on the Raz, woken up the next morning after a few too many scoops and found some homeless vagrant splattered across the hood of my car. Again, we, we all have regrets, but let's let's not get into let's not get into mine. Um Andy, maybe you regret blasting me in the head with a briefcase. It's possible. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't. But trust me on this. If you don't, you certainly will when it comes around to Blanche. Because I am going to take that briefcase and I am going to put it in your ass. That is not a pleasant visual, is it? Well, that's what you've got in store for you, my friend. And to sweeten the deal even more, I am going to fill that briefcase with weapons-grade plutonium. And if my knowledge of radiation is anything to go by, you will die a very painful death of radiation poisoning over the next 40 to 50 years. Ha <laughs> ha! Revenge, thy name is Balance. Now, Andy, for your own sake, show up at Blanche and just offer an apology. I will probably accept it. And there was, there was one other thing from last time. Certainly a question that's arisen a couple of times from people. Bingo. Are you trying to bring down DCW from the inside? <sighs> yes. <laughs>